everyone and welcome to this edition of Show Group on the Sofa. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're in a good place and the sun is shining, um, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and today I'm delighted to welcome my guest, John Fouquet, um, who has been a, a customer of Show Group and a big supporter of Show Group. Um, but before we get into his interview, um, as I always do on the show, I'd just like to give a shout out to my number one fan and Joe Group's number one fan, uh, Mr. Ross Saunders, who is in Norwich, England today. So, hey, Rossi, hope you're in a good place. I think John wants to say hello. Yeah, ha happy early birthday, Ross, and I hope you enjoy that, that football game on Saturday. I told him you're a big Norwich City fan, um, Ross. So, uh, yeah, happy 40th um, for Saturday. Okay, all right. Well, John, it's an absolute pleasure to see you on Show Group on the Sofa today. Um, and um, thank you for all the support you've given to Show Group over its development in the US. It's um, terrific to have someone like you um, rooting for the company. Um, how did you get your start in security? Wow. Um, let me see. It's been. Well, it's been almost two decades since since my start in security. So I actually started in healthcare security as an officer um, right out of high school. So um, I joined the team back then and um, quickly excelled into leadership roles um, and ultimately um, about three years ago, I was a, a regional leader for, for Advent Health. So um, I had three hospitals at the time. Yes. Remember, and we worked through the COVID crisis, and that was um, that was a challenge, wasn't it, for everybody? It was a challenge for the whole planet, but it was a challenge for every employer in uh, Florida um, and certainly the world. I mean, mm -hmm. I think every business on the planet was affected by COVID. Probably the first time in history of the history of the human race that we've all had to shut down or change operations to cope with that emergency, and particularly so in a healthcare setting. I know you guys were under the push. Um, what do you miss about security? Do you miss that? Do you miss that <laughs> sort of, you know, that, that drama? <laughs> I, I do. I do. I, I miss the, uh, I miss the fires. I miss the critical thinking, you know, having to make split second decisions. Um, but you know what I miss the most? Uh, I miss the team, right? So I, I had a lot of, you know, team members that, that had worked with me my whole career, right? And, and a lot of them moved from me, moved with me from site to site and um, from campus to campus. And um, so I, I had built that, that team around me that, you know, that, and it's so integral, so integral, not, not only in healthcare, but in, in, in all industries that you have a team to get those performance goals. And, and um, so, you know, I, if, I were to, if I were to narrow it down to the one thing that I miss the most is the team. You know, and, and I'm building that again now in, uh, in my new venture here. Uh, and I know, I know we're, uh, we're well on the way here, but, you know, after almost 20 years in the healthcare environment, you know, I can honestly say it was the team. Well, I, I, I can see from your um, home office there, your certifications behind you and obviously uh, very, very accomplished in security, but I think what is interesting about you is that you're using that colossal experience now in a whole new ball game, aren't you? You know, so let's let's get into that because um, you know, what 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 have you changed from? You've gone from security operations into hmm, something very very fancy. So tell us about what you're up to these days. Definitely, definitely. So um, I've made the transition over to. Um, you know, I guess you could call it the, the vendor world, right? I've jumped over the fence and I'm, uh, I still get to do a lot of the aspects of my, of my last job that I loved. So, you know, risk assessment, site surveys, um, but I just get to do it for a lot more, uh, a lot more customers, a lot more, a lot more teammates there. And uh, I'm specializing in weapons detection, specifically concealed weapons screening at entryways. Um, and a lot of the work that we do is, is in healthcare. Um, so obviously my, my experience on the healthcare side has been beneficial, um, has been very beneficial and, you know, understanding how technology is laid out and, and how, how we can best integrate with that existing technology as well. So, um, there's a lot of, um, 
there's a lot of overlap there. I think this is such a vital part of the security industry here in America. I, you know, I come from a, a, um, a country where weapons, we have weapons, of course we do in the UK, and, and that's probably on the increase. Um, and we can talk about, you know, knives and um, guns. Um, because for our audience outside of America, this is an interesting conversation, how Americans are tackling the clearly obvious problems they have in controlling um, something that is in the Constitution, so to be able to carry a, a gun, which mm -hmm. again, many people don't understand that, but that's all part of your history and your culture as a country. But then how are you, as really, you know, the forward thinkers on the planet, how are you tackling this problem and um, you know we both have in our network um, Eric Clay I know he's a, a, a buddy of yours and you know he is flagging up on his LinkedIn the incidences of um, violence in the healthcare um, uh, situations isn't he and it's shocking um, what people are doing we've had something similar in the UK just recently and actually Eric reports on that as well you know mm -hmm somewhere else in the world so you know the people that are trying to look after us and take care of us when we're sick to have them attacked um, and subject to sort of um, violence is mm -hmm. uh, one vertical that we can help with that so uh, this this area of uh, weapons detection now your company that you're with now is Athena that's correct um, and we'll give all the links in the show notes later to Athena's uh, social media, YouTube, which I think is really important. Um, but how how is the solution benefiting um, security teams and and a client's organization as a whole? So that's a that's a big question. So I'm I'm going to break it down. Right. Sure. The um, there's multiple issues that are that we're seeing across across the market, but specifically in healthcare. Right. I mean, one of the main issues is the retention retention of staff. Right. So how are healthcare organizations better retaining their staff and keeping them, um, keeping them on board rather than having them, you know, start travel nursing or, or, you know, and it's specifically on the nursing side as well, but it's not just, it's not just nursing. It's, you know, it's EVS, it's security, it's, you know, any number of, any number of uh, departments there, but, but how are you retaining that staff? Right. So, so for us, um, to show a team member that, that you care about them, to show that you are ensuring a safe environment for that team member, that's where, that's where we come in. So our, our solution is not, um, it's not a, a corrections looking device. It does not look like, um, doesn't look like you're going into a, into a prison. Um, it's very visually appealing, um, and yet it has the high screening capability of that of that corrections level uh, institute, if if you'd like, in our typical deployments, we're looking for for 100% of firearms, and our you know we we accurately screen for 100% of firearms, as well as um, uh, larger knives is our typical threat target. So so for the retention piece, to be able to show a team member that that you care about their safety, that they feel safe to come to work, that's that's huge. So that's, that's one of the issues that we're seeing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the other issue is obviously the, the workplace violence concern, right? So you, you want to ensure that, that those threat targets that, you know, guns and knives are not entering your facility. And uh, we are the best suited to do that um, because we have the, the best plan of detection for those threats. Um, as well as paired with the software to document those items as well. So, so um, within the specifically for for the threat detection, uh, you have the capability of tracking individual items as far as guns, knives. Uh, some facilities want to track vapes, so if they want to keep vapes out of their facility as well, obviously that's a that's a hot topic and it has been for the last few years. So, um, so I guess you could say it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach to be able to ensure safety at those entryways and, and making sure those items don't get in the first place. Yes, and I'm sure that as your customers, which are probably some of my customers, 
um, they have a zero tolerance to any weapon of any description being on their premises, like mm -hmm. on their property, zero tolerance to that. But then, of course, it's one thing to have it in a policy. It's another thing to actually tackle it mm -hmm. and to be able to um, have a clear process around how that's going to be handled. So I really, um, I think that this um, software that you're working in now um, is, is, you know, is a game changer for client premises where, yes, they want a security team and or share group supply security officers and security canines. But as you've just said, the security themselves want to be, um, you know, uh, protected from mm -hmm. the, um, well, shall I say, the nutcase, you know, with a, with a rifle or a semi-automatic mm -hmm. weapon or a knife. So we don't want those people even getting into the building. Yeah, exactly right. Idea. Exactly right. And and you hit the nail on the head, right? So the the policies and procedures is is really the first step, right? Yeah. You know, and then how do you go about enforcing those things? And and I should say that, you know, our solution is not, you know, you can't put all your eggs in one basket, right? You have to have you have to have multiple layers, you know, layers like an onion, right? So yeah. security is all about layers and redundancy. Um, so we are a piece of that overall security program, right? And you know, our software gives security directors the capability of making those, those critical decisions based off the data that we provide as well. So, um, but like I said, it's, you know, we're not, we're not the end all be all for, for your whole security program. There has to be multiple layers and, and redundancy for that, for that piece, but we're, we're here to, we're here to help where we can. Right. So, um, as you walk up to a facility that has your, um, system installed, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be okay. It's not going to be intimidating to a visitor or a worker coming into that building. Um, I, I, when we um, met for coffee a few weeks ago, I was talking to you about Disney. I know you won't mind me mentioning Disney, although they use a, a, a different product to yours, but you need to get in a Disney job. Um, but um, the point is, is that a lot of people who are watching this show will have been to Disney and have, have been to that system that you walk up to and it screens you as you walk through um, and I think that's what you know you're advocating is systems don't need to be scary and you know almost like airport scanners I mean but everyone's well, many people have been to airports and have been scanned now I mean it is a way of life isn't it people the public are accepting of these measures to keep them safe I think mm -hmm. it, and it's that yeah it's, it's definitely a level of expectation at this point um, and you know more often than not we get people that that will say, you know, thank you for what you're doing. And they understand the process. And occasionally you'll have a person that, that is um, unruly about it, but that's, you know, they're an outlier, right? I mean, overall majority of people expect that. And it's funny that you mentioned Disney. So, so we actually, we partner with the industry leader in, in weapons detection, um, Chea for, you know, the majority of our hardware. And um, Disney actually uses the Chea open gates at their, um, you know, for their, for their events, for their mobile applications, because the, the Chea open gate is the, you know, the best mobile, um, weapons detection solution on, on the market. Right. So, so it's, it's funny that you mentioned Disney because yes, they do use, they use evolve at their, at their main gate, but they use the open gate at their, you know, VIP entrances and their, you know, VIP events. So. Yes. But Athena, when, when somebody is buying from you, it's the Athena product that they're going to see and engage with, is it? Is that how it yeah. works? Yeah, exactly. So, we, so we, provide, we provide all the software, analytics, um, data, dashboard, um, facial recognition. There's a whole feature set that's built in to our software that, that is paired with, with um, the Chea Open Gate currently. Now, I'm just talking as a... As a a visitor. I'm not talking as a security professional at the moment, but just for the benefit of my audience, when you talk about analytics, is the system going to be able to tell you how many guns of you know people have tried to smuggle through the system in the last week, month, year? You know, you're going to get that kind of analytical information that managers can go, okay, well, you need to add in those different layers and different aspects of our security plan to control this is, is is that what the analytics are going to start telling security managers and hr managers that's exactly right so there's a there's a whole there, there's a whole set of of metrics and data that that are included in our software 
you know, volume by hour, total number of transits, um, the items that are coming through um, with the facial recognition, you get the who that's coming through. So we're accomplishing, we're accomplishing the who and the what at your entryway, right? But really, you know, the important piece behind the metrics, right? Um, with these systems, the, the cost of the hardware uh, doesn't measure up to the cost of the labor to run the system, right? So, so it, you know, it, it's quite a bit more to run the system than it is to, to purchase the system, right? So, so what you want as a security director is the least amount of labor needed to run the system yes. paired with the highest screening capability, right? So uh, our software gives you the, the, the decision-making um, capability with our metrics to better be able to justify your labor, right? So, so if you know you have uh, X amount of volume coming through an entryway um, by hour, right? So you're, you're able to track and trend your, your typical average transits. Yeah. Uh, you're better able to justify your labor and know that you have the ample amount of coverage at that entryway. And on the same token, you don't have too much coverage at that entryway because you don't want to overspend on the labor where you don't need to, right? So if yeah. you know, you know, if you know that there's a there's a time of day where your volume, call it three o'clock in the morning, where your volume is, you know, is substantially lower than 10 o'clock in the morning, um, then you don't need two officers to run the system. You can run it with one. Or even, you know, there's a capability of a semi-automatic entry um, because our software integrates with most access control and video management. Uh, you have the capability of, of integrating with access control and upon detection of a threat, the access control door to remain locked, right? So you can have a what's called a semi-automatic entry um, at those entrances where you don't have a substantial volume, right? So, so think employee entrances, um, places like that. I think that's really interesting because, of course, there is there is the implementation system, and you might think that this system is a catch-all, and therefore you don't need security officers anymore. But of course, you do. And of course, I'll just use the example of Disney because that's a very that's one that many many people have seen. There's Disney have created their own police force uh, in terms of their security team. They even look a bit like Officer Dibble off um, Top Cat, you know, with their their helmets and everything. Um, but they've got plenty of security officers around, which I think is your point, as they're busy throughout their opening hours. And I, I see the value of that. And I, I see the value of security officers having new skills of mm -hmm. being able to handle the public or their visitor community, um, you know, when one of these situations presents, because that's a, a level of, um, they're not police officers, so that's a, a level of tact and diplomacy and professionalism that they bring to the job, isn't it? Of, yeah. You know, putting somebody to the side while they check out what it is that the system has flagged. Exactly, and, and, and very much so, you know, and I, I see that as the, it, it's not so much the future of security, it's the, it's the current state of security. Security officers are, you know, there's a need for them to be technologically savvy, Right. Because, you know, you're running systems like this, you're running access control systems, you're running video management systems, you're running weapons detection. Right. So there's an element of technology that is built into security now. Right. So so you're seeing that more and more in the market where with the need of. Um, just like I said, the you know, technology, technology savvy security officers. Right. So it's not so much the way of the future. It's it's now. It's now. And, and does your system, do you provide security training for the operatives? Very much so. All of our, all of our deployments include, a, uh, include training videos. Uh, when we do a, uh, a full deployment at a, at a customer site, um, we, we train the whole security team on how to run, how to run the system, as well as you know, proper divestment procedures, um, you know, items to look for, um, you know, ways to you know, clear the person and clear the bag. And that's really, you know, that's come from industry best practices over, you know, over years of experience in the market yeah, to be able to, you know, best train those team members. And I guess there's, um, there's a point really, I mean, I was, I was actually going to, um, I was going to fly up to Chicago last week, so I went to airport security and um, I got, you know, I got flagged as something on me was setting an alarm. So I got, you know, I got the pat down. Um, mm -hmm. 
does your system, which I don't really enjoy that. I mean, who does? You know, it's, it, it's part of the process. I, of course, I understand it. But does your system kind of reduce the need for, to tough the visitor community? Because I don't think, I think that's the scary bit about these yeah. types of um, the increasing need to have systems, but also we don't really want to be touched if we can help it. Does yeah. That make sense? Well, yeah. Oh, exactly right. Exactly right. So, so, and what that leads back to is, you know, nuisance alarm rate, right? And, right. and what it ultimately leads back to is, is labor as well. So if you have a high nuisance alarm rate, so your system is, is alerting on, you know, keys, phones, belt buckles, all those, all those types of, you know, non-threat target items, um, then you're going to have a higher nuisance alarm rate because the system will be alerting on those items that aren't threats, right? So, and obviously we call them nuisance alarms because they're a nuisance, right? So yeah. what you want to know as a security director is that the, the system is alerting on threat targets and not those nuisance alarms, right? So, so our system has the capability of discriminating against those, uh, against those everyday items, phones, keys, belt buckles, um, you know, money clips, you know, any of those items that a traditional walkthrough would alert on that you would have to, you know, self divest into a, into a gray bucket on the, on the table there. Yeah. Uh, and you can just walk through and it will accurately detect a threat um, as yes. you walk through the, as you walk through the portal. Yes. So, so it's, it's important that, that your nuisance alarm rate is low. That's, that's what it comes down to, because if your nuisance alarm rate is low, your labor usage is, is lower as well, because the more involvement security has to have, you know, not only is the customer more, you know, there's more of an invasion of privacy on the customer because you're having to pat them down or, or wand them. Right. I mean, that's what, you know, there's quite a few out there as far as yeah. wanding, yeah. but you want to keep that nuisance alarm rate low. So there's less involvement from that perspective. Yes. I, that, that, the image of um, Arnold Schwarzenegger walking through that security scanner on the Total Recall just came into my mind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. I, I guess we're getting more into that kind of, well, as you said, what might be, might be viewed as science fiction is actually hitting us now, which is so good to hear. And, and what I'm particularly interested in is show group security is going down this route in the States now, which I'm delighted about. If I want to do something about it, like we all do, is school security mm -hmm. um, and protecting students and, and children um, in these environments with these terrible tragedies that we're seeing. Does mm -hmm. your system? How does your system kind of address that problem? Because that yeah. So, so, so first of all, I, I want to say that was one of the main reasons why you know Athena was founded because right. you know both both of our founders, um, Lisa and Chris have children and they started the company because they saw the need for that and wanted to ensure, you know, kids safety yes. in, yes. in the education system. Right. So, and I, I have a four-year-old daughter as well. So she's, she's in pre-K now going to kindergarten next year. And yes. it's, you know, it's, it, it scares me to death. You know, I did a, um, I actually did a risk assessment at her, at her pre-K. Um, and I, I called the headmaster and I said, Hey, let me, let me do a complimentary risk assessment just to kind of put some of my fears at ease. Right. And there was, there was some discrepancy. There was some, there, there was some, some, uh, nonconformities, I guess you could say. Um, and they were able to, to fix them rather quickly, most notably a, um, a, uh, disheveled fence in the back that, you know, they, they noted there was, you know, vagrants that were cutting through the property. So that yeah. was one of one of the things that we found, but, but that's why it's so important to provide, you know, site surveys and risk assessments for those facilities, because, you know, as I said before, weapons detection isn't, isn't the end all be all right. It's not the, it's not the cure all for, for all the problems in the, in the industry, right. There's, there's, you know, you can't, I, I like to say it like this. If you, you know, if you're crawling, you're not going to go straight to running, right. There's a lot of things to put in place prior to weapons detection. And a lot of the times when we, come onto a customer site and we're doing a, a site survey, there's a lot of things to fix before we can even, you know, consider weapons detection. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but once the security team is to that point, um, we're, we're able to, to best implement those, those policies and procedures. And, and like I said before, that really comes back to industry best practice and, and experience in the market on, you know, what's the sense in, recreating the wheel. We've already done it with other customers, use the same 
use the same policies and procedures, especially if it's the, if it's within yeah. the same industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, specifically schools, you know, we do quite a bit of work in schools, um, quite a bit of work in, in K-12 private schools. And, um, it, it is definitely a huge benefit. Um, as long as the, as long as you have a team to run it. Right. I mean, it, and it comes back to, you know, whether you're using SROs to run those, to run those devices or, um, you know, uh, security teams, but um, it just comes back to having the capability of, of running it. You can't, you can't, it's not a, it's not an easy bake oven. You can't set it and forget it. No, no. It's something that's got to be constantly watched and managed and nurtured. And I guess, and you know what I'm going to say, it also comes down to funding. Um, yes. I mean, something like your system, um, you know, in the great United States, can't we find some budget for these schools to have this kind of system implemented um, um, from a federal level rather than a state or local level, you know, because, um, but there's, a, there's many, many schools. I think there's somebody told me there's like 130 or 1,000 schools, you know, in the United States. It's a big number. Sounds about um, right. <laughs> but um, that said, the, um, the system, as you, as you develop it, I'm sure you'll be able to help customers more with their implementation and their management of that system, um, which will, you know, address a, a very important. But there, there, are, there are so many verticals you can go into. Of your healthcare, which we've started talking about, I'm mm -hmm. taking you down this track for schools because I think people will be interested on, well, how can we protect children in school? And this, as you say, is part of the security plan for schools. But there's airports, um, and there's you know the shopping malls and there's all sorts of areas where mm -hmm. uh, this system um, can help yeah yeah um, Manu manufacturing and casino are the other you know two other big industries for us as well okay. manufacturing and casinos. so yeah, in, in, as well. in terms of casinos have you got anything in vegas or atlanta or any of the big casinos um we do we've got a handful uh in atlantic city a handful in vegas yeah, yeah very good very good um so I guess I was going to ask you kind of a, a larger question, which is, do you think that your system is crucial to a security plan? I think you've answered that. Um, but it, that it really, how can you have a security plan without that kind of tech? Exactly. For some of the people that we've been talking, for some of the um, organisations we've been talking about, I, 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 you know, find the budget, <laughs> lose mm -hmm. some administration, you know, and find the budget to put this system in in some of your over, you know, um, your management overhead or your your, um, your admin overhead or something that's not really adding what I would call real value to your to your business and your, your organization. Exactly, and, and there's a lot of there's a lot of opportunity out there for for grant funding specifically for schools as well. Yes, uh, and and we can help with that as well. You know, we've got we've got. A team that helps us with that process. What to kind of like locate the grant and then facilitate it and, and bring it. Yep. And, and some of it, some you know, some of the grants are, are a match. You know, you you know, the yeah. school puts up X amount of dollars and they and they match that dollar, or um, others are just a full on, you know, full on cover. So, you know, it just depends on kind of what you're what you're applying for. So, I mean, when you um, get a lead somebody um, this must be new for you being in the vendor environment uh, you know talking to customers or you're you know absolutely acing it in terms of um, your uh, your credibility as a security professional and then just taking the customer through this this, this you know opportunity to change and improve their security um, you know what what are those operational considerations? So if you came to me and said, right, well, I think this is what we can do. I mean, I, you'd have my my undivided attention, John. I can tell you that now. So what is it that you're going to talk to a customer about in terms of operational considerations? Yeah. So it, so first of all, thank you for that, Claire. Um, I guess for me, you know, I, I see my job as more at you know more education than anything else right you know just just kind of at, you know educating the person on industry best practices and you know where we can where we can help in that process and you know what pieces that we can really you know escalate right so so um 
I'm, I don't view myself as a salesman, right? I mean, that's just a byproduct of what I do, but um, it's more so a consultative experience than anything else, yeah. right? So, yeah, it's got to so be, it, hasn't it? It's got to be it, that. And it has to be. People, it has people to be. will they'll evaluate what you're saying and, and, and the, the sincerity and the the, um, the appropriateness of the of the system will almost sell it itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I can, I can honestly say, you know, as I alluded to before, there's been situations where, you know, I can't recommend weapons detection to a customer, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm not the type, I, I'm not the type to push, um, push our solution on someone that, you know, can't manage it. Right. And that's something that we determine early on whether or not it's a fit in the first place. You know, there's, as I noted before, there's, there's a, a lot of things that you can do before that, that, you know, that are quite honestly cheaper, right? So, you yes. know, a lot of, you know, crime prevention through environmental design, it's free, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do that can harden your, harden your entryways that, you know, literally cost the time of the, of the landscaping technician. Um, so, so, that, and, and we cover that in, you know, in our site surveys and our risk assessments. So yeah. there's a lot of things you can do um, that are quite honestly free. So I think that's really good advice um, in terms of, you know, doing what you can. But I do, I, I mean, I love, the, I love the fact that you're giving these risk assessments in a consultative capacity. Is there a cost to that, just for people listening? Is there a cost to that consultative process or is that something that's complementary in the initial stages for a bit of both? So I'm, I'm down in Orlando, right? So as long as, you know, if it's a drive for me, I, I, I don't typically charge. Um, if there's some travel associated, I would probably just ask for the travel to be covered. But, um, but like I said, if it's, if it's local to me, like I said, I, you know, obviously I did my, 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 my daughter's school, right? Because I have a vested interest at the, <laughs> in, in that setting. Um, but it's also local. So I, I was able to do that in a day and I drove over and, you know, dropped her off and then did, did the site survey. So, so it really just depends on, um, depends on the customer, depends on the location, but we've also, we also have, um, you know, consultants like me uh, across the country. So if, if it's not me, it could be someone else. Of course, of course. And of course, there's always the opportunity, as we're doing today, to talk to a customer on Zoom and, you know, even look at a customer site from, a, you know, from, from you know, aerial and uh, yeah. street maps and start exactly. to build up a picture of what the customer needs. So I, I, I think it's, you know, um, I think Athena is, and I'm so glad to hear the back story of how your company was set up. And I think all of us as parents, you know, that's that there for the grace of God go I, you know, we, we want our children to be safe at school and college and very much so. That's a that's a great driver for what you're doing as opposed to somebody that perhaps is just in it to, you know, develop a product. It's it's mm -hmm. got a real the company's got a real gravitas in terms of its um, its mission. Mm -hmm. Um so I I, I I see the value of Athena and, and as you were even telling me about it um, a few weeks ago. I, I, I love the idea of it. Um, what about what about our security officers? I mean, I've got officers under my wing. You 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 built teams of officers. Um, what, what's your advice for the next generation of security officers? You know, and and, and young people coming into security now. Um, what, what would you say to them? Um. So. You know, look, looking back at my career, you know, there's been a handful of times, probably more than a handful, um, that, you know, there's been roadblocks, right? There's always, yeah. there's always, there's always storms, right? And then there's, there'll be, you know, calms before the storm, calm after the storm. But I guess if I were to say, you know, one, one word to the, um, the oncoming generation or even the ones that are, you know, currently in the market, right? Persistency, you know, be, be persistent. Um, and I guess if I were to expand on that, be, be consistent as well, right? So persistency and consistency. So you, you know, you keep, you keep pushing until, you know, your desired outcome is achieved, right? And then you keep pushing after that as well. You know, this isn't, this isn't the industry to relax. You know, this isn't the industry to sit back and, and, you know, put your feet up and, and watch, you know, watch the CCTV all day. That's, that's not where we're at anymore. It may have been you know, 20, 25 years ago, but we're not, 
we're not there anymore. And as I said before, you have to be technologically savvy, right? So taking it upon yourself to learn those aspects of, of the security program, take it upon yourself to um, make yourself as you know, valuable to the program as possible um, by learning those aspects. So, um, and that's so important, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're wanting to excel within this industry, you have to do that. You know, you have to, you have to look at it as, as the long game and, and don't look at it as the, as the short, the short term incentives, because, you know, if you start looking at it and saying, Oh, I'm going to get this certification because I'm getting a, a quarter more an hour. That's not, that's not what we're here for. You know, you're here to learn, you're here to, to better yourself and make yourself more, more, more valuable. So. Yes. I mean, you know, security has a, a fairly simple entry level D license training or G license if you're armed. Um, but I think that you can use that. So let's say you're not the most academic person and maybe you don't want to go to college, you know, you're happy that you come out of high school and you want to enter the job market, you can get your D license. Mm -hmm. And it, and really it's a it's a it's a passport into a a system that and you can build up your certifications and um, the more the more certifications you have the better it looks on the resume I mean I see a lot of resumes for security officers and there's just not a lot on there um, mm -hmm. but if somebody's coming from the police or the military then obviously that's a huge that's a huge tick in the box um, but you know for coming from um, high school or maybe college into security you know, like John said, I think you've, you've got to, like you said, you've, you've got to kind of build up your certifications and you mm -hmm. know, something like this system is, is a, you know, weapons detection, understanding that um, mm -hmm. is a great thing to have on your resume. Um, yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because we actually have, we have certification levels built into our solution as well. So that's maybe. actually, yep, we do. Yep. Yep. And that covers everything from, you know, divestment procedures all yeah. the way up to, you know, documentation, uh, incident reporting, you know, so we have a whole, whole set of uh, certifications built into our software as well for, for our customers. So as a customer takes the system, then you help them train up their team. Exactly. Yep. Level one, two, three. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And that, that's a great, that's a great advantage, isn't it? Of, of, um, and, and also, um, for security officers, knowing that you are going to be trained and certified on the system, you're going to get that certification. Um, what a what a tremendous thing to do! I mean, you know, if you're going to be security, let's let's secure, you know. And uh, I think that's that's interesting. And um, you know, learning the system and the nuances of the system that's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good to hear. Because otherwise, you could just think, well, it's just something you buy out the box. And mm -hmm. you just put you just put it on the site and it like you said it just it, it doesn't work like that. You know? Yeah, but yeah. For people who don't know what weapons detection means, it's just a whole different aspect of security mm -hmm. and the security plan on site. So I'm really pleased to hear that Athena are investing in that. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, we're we're not in the business of like I said before, you know, setting and forgetting. We're in the business of, of building partnerships, right? So, yes. um, and, you know, partnerships for the long haul. So yes. when we, you know, when we deploy at a customer site, you know, that's, you know, that's oftentimes just the beginning of the relationship, right? We're, we're expanding on that relationship. We're, we're training the officers. We're working on policies and procedures. So there's a lot of things in place to best be able to do that. Okay. Well, <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I told you I was a fan when I saw you and uh, I wanted you to get in at Disney. <laughs> Maybe you're still working on that. Um, but um, well, how do people get in touch? John, there is so many people that could take this system. How do they get in touch with you? How do they start that conversation? Well, um, you can go to a, athenasecurity.com. Uh, we're on, you know, we're on, I, I'm on LinkedIn specifically, uh, Athena Security is on LinkedIn as well. Um, yeah. And we actually have a YouTube, YouTube channel. We've got a lot of um, customer testimonials on there, training videos. Yes. Um, so if there's anyone that's interested in, in seeing the training aspect for, um, you know, whether you, whether you use our, 
solution or not, you know, you can benefit from, you know, different training aspects. So, so, um, we're on YouTube. Um, so, but athenasecurity.com is probably a, a safe bet there. Um, or my email, John B at athenasecurity.com. Okay. Well, we're going to put all your, um, social media, email, and YouTube, um, okay. LinkedIn into the show notes. So that will be um, optimized and that will be, you'll be searchable. So um, if anyone's listening to this and they want to get in touch with John, I've worked with John over the years, absolutely safe pair of hands. And just as he stands today, very calm. And I think one of your words was consistent uh, and consistency. And that is what John brings to the table in terms of looking after security operations. Um, so, John, thank you so much for guesting today. Um, it's been a fascinating interview. I'm so glad that we did this and that you brought another aspect to the fore um, of how um, the US, the great US, is tackling this problem that the world sees and we know that you guys want to sort it out and, you know, you've got the tech and the, um, the systems to be able to do that. It's so good to hear that. And, of course... This tech doesn't just stay in the US, it's available. I'm sure you have opportunities overseas and, and in the UK and further afield. So weapons detection in any part of the world is a, um, a growing conversation and one that we can tackle if we take Very much so, months. very much so. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the kind words. Um, this has been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, John. So, well, that's today's um, interview um, and but everyone else uh, will be back with another show, um, in a, probably another related solution in Sherbrooke. You can find us at SherbrookeUSA.com for this security type solution. You can find us for other solutions on our uh, platform of Sherbrooke.com. So um, take your pick. Um, Sherbrooke is growing in a number of different ways um, as we speak. Um, but thank you, John, and thank you to everyone else who's joining in and growing our um, our audience, we appreciate you and uh, we'll speak soon. Thanks everyone and bye John.